That's quite a, quite, quite a thing to follow. So thanks for teeing it up that way. Uh, my name is Matt Reitmeyer. Uh, I'm here to tell you what the Entrepreneurs Foundation of New Hampshire is up to. This is an initiative of the Charitable Foundation whose goal is to link entrepreneurs and not-for-profit leaders from around the state. When you connect those two groups, some amazing things happen. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, what we've seen occur as a result of that interaction. So you may have heard about a program that we have organized called the AMP Award. Not-for-profits pitch projects that provide amplified benefits. We just completed the fifth year of our AMP Awards, and this spring granted $75,000 from the fund that EFNH has built with the Charitable Foundation to organizations like the Community Toolbox on the Seacoast, First in Manchester, and Cover Home Repair in the Upper Valley. In the AMP program, not-for-profit leaders participate in, in a day-long event called Pitch Camp where they're paired with a coach and mentor from the business world, from their communities, to refine their story and how they tell it. And then they have three minutes to make their pitch. Why three minutes? Because in the world of business, we believe, you have three minutes to connect with people and to get them engaged with the ideas that you have. You take longer than that, you're going to have a hard time creating that connection. So right now, I'm putting myself to the same test that we put those not-for-profit leaders to. My friend Cheryl Van Allen in the front row here from Community Toolbox, she's my coach, and she's timing me. I've got three minutes to deliver the message, so I better get going. You'll hear from Cheryl in a minute. When I first became involved with the FNH five years ago, I was simply following my business partner, Jesse Devitt, who some of you may know. Jesse was, has been, uh, is a past board member of the Charitable Foundation, and he, and he helped get EFNH off the ground. The more I learned, the more excited I became about the way that EFNH is connecting with not-for-profit leaders. But it's not about the money. It's not just about the money. For entrepreneurs like me, it's about being able to use the talent and energy and experiences that we've had for the benefit of the communities that we call home. So a lot of us went into this thinking, you know what, we're going to deliver a lot of value to these not-for-profit leaders. They're going to benefit so much by what we have to tell them. And the truth of the way it worked was maybe the exact opposite of that. I think the entrepreneurs that comprise our group, we likely benefit more than the not-for-profit leaders in that interchange. We learn more about the communities we call home, about the roles that not-for-profits play in those communities. And I think the fact that we're able to benefit in that way is, is remarkable. So that's what drove me to become such a passionate advocate for EFNH, because of the connections that occur between not-for-profit leaders and entrepreneurs. Yes, the money is important. Don't get me wrong. It's very important. Without it, some of the not-for-profits that we help, they, they, they wouldn't thrive the way they do. But it's the connections that enable other kinds of support that are equally valuable. So here's some examples of that. Corey Von Wallenstein from Adored, he learned about the Mount Washington Observatory through EFNH. And he was motivated enough by what he learned to organize a peer group to help them think through strategy. And he eventually became a member of the Board of Trustees. Sean McGowan, who's now with Scribe Software, heard about the pressing IT needs at New Horizons, which helps the homeless in, in Manchester, and as a consequence, invested hours bringing their technology systems up to date. One organization that made a pitch last year wasn't successful. They didn't win a $25,000 grant from EFNH. But as a result of participating, they turned the head of one of EFNH's members who provided them with a $25,000 grant. So I call those things out because, yes, the money's important, but equally important are the ways that we're engaging the community of entrepreneurs in the state of New Hampshire to deliver value beyond the dollars. And it's what motivates entrepreneurs to be as involved 
as myself and my colleagues are. The work that nonprofits do is a huge part of what makes New Hampshire great. These collaborations are strengthening our communities, they're bolstering the not-for-profit sector, and they're improving the quality of life that we all enjoy. Through EFNH, we have an opportunity to create the kinds of communities where our businesses, employees, and our families will thrive. That's why I do what I do with EFNH, and that's why I'm proud to talk about what we do here tonight. Cheryl, how did, how did I do? How did I do? Right on time. Yes. I think you did really well. What do you guys think? How did he do? One question I do think that was left unanswered is, if anyone in this room is interested in getting involved with EFNH, how would they go about that? That's a good coach right there. So I'm going to be around this evening, and I'm sure any of the staff members from the foundation who are equally well-versed in the work that EFNH does would love to answer any questions you may have. So track us down, please. So, as Matt told you, my name's Cheryl Van Allen, and I'm the Executive Director of Community Toolbox, a new Fix-It program in Portsmouth, and the recent award winner for the 2015 EFNH AMP $25,000 grant, a grant I almost didn't even apply for. I heard about this grant for innovative ideas, and I thought, well, we're a Fix-It program. There's really not anything new about that. But then I learned from Simon at the Charitable Foundation that while there are programs who have done things like we do, the way we do them is unique. So we went for it. Thank goodness. Thank you, Simon. I won't lie to you. The process was incredibly daunting. Speaking in public, to start with, the finalists that we were up against run amazing organizations. And anyone who knows me knows that when I'm passionate about something, Keeping me to three minutes is a bit of a challenge. Luckily, I had two amazing mentors, John and Selena from the Thomas Haas Foundation. I could not have done it without them. They offered encouragement as well as their incredible perspective and insight into our program, helping me to nail down the critical points and really hone my pitch. The day of pitch camp was a little scary, but it was also incredible. We got to work on our pitches live on stage. We got live feedback from the people that were there and honed our messages on the fly. When it came time to give the pitch, I like to say that I was like the world's tallest duck. Evidently, I looked all calm and smooth on the surface, but underneath, I was a bundle of nerves and energy. When they called the name of Community Toolbox to say that we had won $25,000, I was beyond shocked. I won't lie, I cried. This money will allow us to double, if not triple, our impact in the community this year alone. The money aside, I would suggest to any nonprofit to become involved with this process. While the money is absolutely amazing, thank you, we had lots of other benefits. I now have a new network of nonprofit leaders who I worked with at Pitch Camp and feel comfortable reaching out to for support and networking and brainstorming. On top of that, I met a room full of passionate, committed, community-centric entrepreneurs who taught me how to hone an effective message that can tell the world what we do and why it's important. They gave me the confidence not just to tell you the message, but to know that our mission is compelling not just to us inside the organization, but to so many of you in the community as well. And for that, I am truly grateful. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you.